Imagine walking into a very large supermarket full of literally everything you can buy, from groceries to electronics, and getting to purchase any item at mouthwatering discounted prices simply because you paid as low as $60 for a membership card. Aside from that, each time you walk into this supermarket, it looks like you just unraveled something new. Now, that's exactly what shopping at Costco feels like. You see, since it was founded in 1976, Costco has continued to come up with innovative ways to keep its customers wanting more. And despite the fact that it completely shuns traditional advertising, it's grown to become the third largest retailer in the world. So how did Costco grow to become such a big shot in the retail industry? What is the secret behind its continued existence? In this video, we'll be exploring the history of Costco. Stay tuned, because there are so many unique things you're bound to find out about this company that you've surely not seen anywhere else. What we know today as Costco actually took its name from a merger of two different companies, Price Club and Costco in 1993. Price Club took its name from its owner, Sol Price. You see, while Sol Price wasn't really much of a businessman, learning most of what he knew about the world of business through his legal work helping others with certain financial issues such as bankruptcies, real estate deals, and partnerships, he had some inclinations toward entrepreneurship. Price, however, entered into the retail business in an attempt to find a use for a warehouse he had initially helped his mother-in-law purchase in the year 1953. Well, talk about a lucky coincidence. It was a while searching for good use of this warehouse that Price stumbled upon Fedco. Fedco, as it turned out, was a large warehouse store in Los Angeles that sold a variety of goods at low prices to members. You could say that it was run more or less like a cooperative. This cooperative, however, was actually primarily set up to serve the United States Postal Service's workers and their families. After a deep analysis of Fedco, Price decided that it would be best to partner with the company. His partnership, however, was rejected. But like most successful entrepreneurs today, after a rejection, Price went ahead to use what he had learned about the company to start his own company. Interestingly, he even gave it a name similar to the company he derived his inspiration from, and that's how Fedmart, Price's retail company, came into existence. Price operated Fedmart like Fedco, and thus sold goods at low prices to members. In return, members had to pay membership dues to continue enjoying this privilege. The company went public in 1959, and due to its uniqueness, it soon became a public sensation and an inspiration to many. In fact, many top entrepreneurs today reveal that they at some point even drew their inspiration from Price's Fedmart. Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, for instance, revealed that many of his ideas were actually borrowed, as he prefers to put it, from Fedmart. Later on, Price proceeded to sell the company to a German retailer in 1975. That same year, however, Price founded Price Company, and the year after that, he opened Price Club a company that ran in a manner similar to Price's previous company. After a few years, however, it was obvious that while Pricemart was experiencing massive growth, Fedmart, which had lost what some would call the price touch, was heading towards bankruptcy as its new owners could not maintain Price's success. Fedmart was eventually shut down in 1983. In the same year, Fedmart was shut down, Costco, a company that would later on merge with Price Club, was founded by two men, Jeff Brotman and James Senegal in Seattle, Washington. Now, while both men had different origin stories, both shared something similar, and that's the fact that they were in some way inspired by Price's work. Jeff Brotman, a lawyer with a liking for business, was urged by his father, who had noticed Price's success while James Senegal had actually worked with Price both at Fedmart and Price Club, and thus had over time learned some of Price's tricks. Like Price's Fedmart and Price Club, the results of Costco, their innovation, were massive. In fact, Costco literally grew from nothing to $3 billion within six years. By 1993, both Price Club and Costco decided that it would be best to merge, and thus, Price Costco was born. The number of sales the company got after the merger showed that it was the action both companies really needed. In 1993, for instance, Price Costco made $15.5 billion in sales. And if you recall, that amount was basically five times the amount Costco made when it was founded in 1993. 
By 1997, however, the name of the new company was changed such that it became simply known as Costco. It's worth noting, however, that Costco continued to experience an exponential growth rate over the years. In 2019, for instance, the company recorded a total sales of $152.7 billion. Interestingly, despite the effects of online shopping on traditional physical shopping and the downstream effects of the coronavirus, Costco still managed to pull even more customers to itself. For example, in 2020, due to the effects the coronavirus lockdown had on movement and by extension, physical shopping, Costco experienced a drop in sales in the month of April. Interestingly, this is the first drop it had experienced in over a decade. What's even more interesting was the fact that the company managed to adapt and bounced back stronger in May, the next month, and continued to do so in June and July. Looking at Costco's history, there's no doubt that Price's idea was a masterpiece. However, aside from paying very little for membership in return for something even greater, what other secrets make Costco such a big shot such that even with companies like Amazon incorporating some of the company's secrets, it still continues to top the retail marketplace? To understand this, first, one has to understand that Costco's membership actually comes in different packages. The basic Costco membership costs $60 per year, and with just this amount, the customer has unrestricted access to Costco's product line. On the other hand, the customer may also opt to go for an executive membership. This costs $120, so it's basically double the price of a regular membership. However, in exchange for paying that fee, Costco offers that member 2% cash back on all Costco purchases. Additionally, the executive also gets some other perks, like extra Costco travel benefits and discounts on certain Costco services. If there's one message Costco's services pass, it's the fact that the company always puts its customers first and does this in a way very few companies can only dream of doing. And this fact is one of its greatest secrets. Aside from the low prices in Costco's retail warehouses, which by the way, are currently a total of 825 warehouses in the world, the company has been known to refuse to raise prices for goods it sells even when the same goods at other shops are overpriced, probably due to the effects of inflation. Customers are therefore assured that irrespective of what the rest of the world suffers, they would definitely get preferential treatment at Costco, where they buy their stuff, and as of May 2022, Costco has a total of 116.6 million members in the world. Additionally, in a bid to keep its customers happy, Costco ensures that the atmosphere in all its warehouses is as friendly as it can be. It's said to achieve this by ensuring that its employees are happy as it believes that happy employees would be more inclined to help out customers in need than unhappy ones. As a result of this ideology, Costco pays its employees who total about 288,000 people in the world at some of the best, if not the best rate in the world. Now, while the ideas behind its inception and the fact that the company treasures its customers above everything else are keys to the company's growth, by far, the greatest secret behind Costco's continued success comes from its mode of operation. You see, Costco operates on a market strategy that most times guarantees that the average customer buys even more than they plan to. How does it do this? Well, when you enter the average Costco warehouse, the first thing you're bound to notice is the fact that it has no guides or labels that would tell you what section to find or what you're looking for. This, therefore, makes the Costco experience more like an adventure. And like most adventures, you're sure to find one or two things that although aren't part of your initial plan, tickle your fancy, and with the attractive prices, chances are that you'll definitely expand your budget a bit more to buy more. Aside from this, because Costco employees continue to change each part of the warehouse and array of goods in each section, each Costco experience feels different and even more exciting than the former. And that's the Costco secret. So what do you think about Costco? Have you ever been to a Costco store? Tell us about your experience in the section below.